are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. You know, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The mark of a good program is one that is relevant from when you learn it to even 39 or 40 years later, which is exactly what has happened to me. And I'm going to talk about a couple of, uh, we'll call them training tips and techniques, which is training different angles as well as training tempo. And the, um, the reason that is important is because most people that are into the gym are weight training, weightlifting, let's say, versus training the muscle. That is one of the first things that needs to be addressed because if that's kind of like uh, pouring a foundation. If you don't learn that weight lifting is much different than weight training, then you'll be that person that's always stuck in the same spot, never making the results that you want to make. Most people are wasting motion because they're weight lifting. It's a distinction um, that will make the whole difference in your training virtually overnight. And I guess the easiest way to explain the difference between weight lifting and weight training is that the goal should be that you should always feel what you train. Feel the exercise that you're working and, and or the muscle that you're working and feel that exercise in, with every repetition. I don't think most people really understand what that means. They just, oh yeah, they understand it, they nod their head, but it takes so much effort and discipline to feel what you're training from the minute you get into the gym until you go out because uh, you're, you're constantly fighting a few things. One is fatigue. And one of the things that your uh, brain will do, some people don't pay attention to what their, the mind or their brain is really doing during a set, for example. And what happens a lot of, time, it, a lot of times is, number one, uh, people are really, especially guys, are more interested in lifting heavy weight than they are actually training the muscle. That's where weightlifting is the difference between training a muscle and weightlifting. And so you have to fight that, especially guys. Uh, ego gets involved, and they often forget that what the stated goal is. And I'm talking about the stated goal being putting on as much muscle mass as humanly possible. If that is the case, then you must understand that the the best way to train for muscle gain is volume training. Some of this will be rehashed, but it has to be because most people do not get that. Not on the level that I'm talking about. It's, it's volume training. It's not about lifting as much weight as you can. That's what makes the difference. Doesn't mean that you won't get stronger as you're doing a training program that's built to put on as much muscle as humanly possible, but it still is based around volume training. And when that's the case, you're going to lift weights that you're able to do anywhere from 8 to 20 repetitions. Let's just keep it at that range for right now. Concentrate on feeling everything that you train, no matter what body part it is. And when you can do that effectively for the whole body, you're going to see that's going to take a, a good amount of time. And that's the reason why it takes so many years before somebody can actually get up on a on a competitive stage, especially at the world level, because it's 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 so hard. It's like taking a block of clay and and then trying to make this perfect physique. And it's easier, I think, in some ways to do a block, block of clay because you're not having to fight, fight uh, pain and fatigue and soreness uh, that you'll have to do in the gym to get this done the proper way. So I'm going to talk about training angles. This is one of the best ways that you can 
um, make muscle grow efficiently. And I have to tell you, I learned this trick. There were two plane rides that I took in my life within the last 40 years. And it was actually about 39 to 40 years ago in both of these plane rides that I took. One of them was the, the ride that I took to Bulgaria where I learned there that the body becomes its function. That's huge. In other words, you teach your body what you want it to do. It, you, it's trainable. Your physiology is trainable. Um, and then the second thing is, is when I came back from the, uh, I went to the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. And it, it wasn't, you know, what I learned had nothing to do with um, athletes who competed in the event, which were amazing. These guys were, were fantastic uh, athletes. It wasn't that I had a vendor booth there that I met all kinds of really cool people. I mean, it was an experience that I'll never forget. But on my plane ride back, uh, I, I met a gentleman by the name of Bob Green. I don't even know if he's still around. At the time, he was living on top of uh, Vince, Vince's studio, Vince Geronda. He was living on top of his studio. Vince had it upstairs in this dungeon that he called his studio. And Bob was a writer for um, one of the muscle mags. And unlike a, a lot of my plane rides that I took over the 40 years, I met a lot of people because I was usually going to an event and there'd be athletes on there. And in this case, it was Bob Green coming back from this uh, from the Arnold Classic. And I got to talking to him and he, he asked me, he said, well, he told me he, he, he wrote for these magazines and he also uh, trained at Vince Durant's gym. Well, Vince back in those days, he was and he still is in my mind. He was like the guru. Uh, he trained Arnold Schwarzenegger. He trained a lot of the, the great bodybuilders. Uh, a lot of people didn't know that because back then, Vince was really anti, you know, hyping bodybuilding and promoting and that kind of thing. He was a purist. So you didn't really hear much about Vince, that he was really the guy that trained Arnold Schwarzenegger when he first came over. And some other people as well, Louis Ferrigna, I think, and Larry Scott. I mean, there's some some great names that trained at Vince's gym. I'm learning this as I'm coming back from this trip with, uh, from Bob Green. Well, as it turns out, I asked Bob, I said, man, it would be awesome if I could go train at Vince's gym. Would I be able to do that? And he said, uh, yeah, I, I can get you in. And he said, uh, but let me, let me first talk to Vince, which I thought was really interesting. I mean, it's a gym. It might, you know, I didn't have that much experience in gyms, but I wasn't a rookie either. And it was like, he had to ask to see if I could come to Vince's gym. And I found out why, you know, later on, because in fact, I did uh, go to Vince's gym. I'll never forget the day that I, I drove up there. And before I went in, Bob Green came out and met me outside of Vince's gym. And he said, uh, hold on, let me go see if it's okay. I'm like, this is really weird. I have never had this kind of experience going into the gym. Yeah, he said, uh, Bob came back out. And he said, yeah, come on in. Vince said, it's okay. And this is where my journey really began. And this is where I, the lesson, one of the lessons that I learned from Vince Duranda. And I learned quite a few of them from him. He was a very interesting uh, character. He was cantankerous, ornery, mean, all the above. But the guy at the heart, he, he, at, the, at the heart of it, he really did have a heart of gold. You just had to get to know Vince, you know? He was cranky for a reason. I think he, he couldn't put up with a lot of the shit that was going on in the industry, you know? And uh, the, the gym environment to him back then, and it's a lot worse now, I think, in my, in, from my view, uh, the gym environment back then in most gyms was just, you know, Vince didn't agree with it. He didn't uh, think, um, you know, all the music that was in the gym was necessary. In fact, when you went into Vince's gym, there was no music. All you could hear in there was the clanging of the weights. And you didn't hear a lot of talking uh, in his uh, gym. People were there to train. You hear clanking of the weights. And basically the conversations that were going on inside that gym all related to what was going on in that training program. It wasn't bullshitting around like a lot of these people do. I mean, forget about this uh, social media now. I mean, most people are taking selfies uh, with more intensity than they are lifting weights. So forget about that. But Vince was amazing. I mean, I even saw him one time a person came in. I'll tell a quick story. They came in as a girl and she had some headphones on like these little earbuds. Uh, why they were not wireless, so there was a wire connected to the phone and and earbuds. And she was sitting down, putting on her um, her tennis shoes or something, 
uh, you know, to get ready to go train. And Vince, he sat always behind his counter. That was like his, uh, you know, he was like the Gestapo behind that counter. And he saw this girl because in his gym, there was no music. And that obviously included um, anyone who wore uh, earbuds or anything of, of the sort to listen to music. I saw this with my own eyes. He walked up to that girl, innocently putting on her shoes, listening to some music. He pulled one of the buds out of her ear, and he said, if you want to listen to that fucking music, go down the road to the other gym. That's how Vince was. That was the environment. Um, anyway, what I learned from Vince was training angles. You know, getting to one of the points. You train different angles to the muscle, and you're going to create a, a response. See, unlike doing cardio, and there's some misconception about doing cardio, uh, you can't pinpoint losing body fat when you're doing cardio. Unlike when you're training with weights, you can do that if you know how to change the angle to the muscle because there's m many different angles that you can change to that muscle to create a response. Keep in mind, there's when you understand physiology, you understand that you can't and shouldn't change the angles too often because it takes about, there's a 21 day rule. It takes about 21 days for the body to adapt to a training regimen. So if you're training in this case, a certain angle, you don't wanna train it for one or two days and then train other angles to get the most out of it. I'm not saying that you can't do that, but if the stated goal is to get the most out of that training session, that repetition that you're doing, you wanna ideally train from a certain angle, and this applies to all body parts, you want to train a certain angle for 21 days thereabouts because that's when the physiology start, starts adapting to the environment. There's a reason for doing this. And that's what a lot of times people don't understand because they never have gotten the right uh, answer or the why of why they shouldn't or should do something. So you need to change the angle about every 21 days before you, and then go on and train that, let's say it's a tricep, and then train it from a different angle. This applies in every single body part, all right? Now, you'll have to understand that, again, we talked about lifting the most weight is not the answer if the stated goal is to put on muscle. So don't be demoralized when you're putting your body in certain angles that you can't do a lot of weight. In fact, I would say that, because I, I know doing like, a, I call it, it's a kickback with a raise. And I, I'm not gonna show you how it looks, but I can just tell you, believe me, when you do a kickback and a raise and you, you're bent, at your body at your waist you are putting your yourself basically at a big disadvantage to be strong and if you are too egotistical if you got too big an ego you probably won't be able to handle that shit because you know what to do a tricep kickback with a raise uh, eight to ten pounds is all you can do i mean think about that doing a tricep with eight to ten pounds you would think that that'd be something uh a toddler not a toddler uh, maybe a a young kid or a girl would do but a guy a a full grown man, that's what you have to deal with. And if you can't do that, then be okay with the results. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up with the angles and just say, do your training angle to whatever muscle that you're doing for 21 days and then change the angle. That's when you're gonna get the most out of your program because you wanna be inside that, that um, plateau. You don't wanna live in there, but you wanna be inside the plateau because that's where the all the results happen. But if you're in there too long, that's when you stop growing. So that's when you make the change. After about 21 days or so, you make the change. All right, that's one way to train the body without having to load up and do a bunch of weight. It's pretty simple that way. Let's take a quick pause to tell you about something you are definitely gonna want. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. 
The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you big beyond belief in the Bulgarian power burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Okay, enough of the uh, the training angles. Let's talk about the training tempo and why that is important. Again, think about what the stated goal is, people. Keep going back to the stated goal every single time. What is your stated goal? It's to feel what you train because that's when the body makes the best result. That's when you're really, truly training that muscle. You don't have to train to absolute failure uh, on a regular basis. I get comments and people reaching out to me asking about that. And absolute failure is not the answer. So what does that mean? That means that you leave a couple of reps in the tank each and every time. That doesn't mean that every once in a while you, you, you can go to absolute failure. That's fine. But when you do it on a regular basis, you're going to find that your body's going to start breaking down, shutting down. It's, it's going to be um, counterproductive to do it on a regular basis. So make sure that you leave a couple of reps in the tank, a couple of reps for the next set that you do. All right. And again, the standard goal is putting on muscle. It's um, feel what you train. So it doesn't always um, have to be um, a medium tempo or a slow tempo. I've heard guys before, they, they believe in just doing very slow tempo and through that range of motion, uh, tension under the motion. That's, you know, there's a lot of different schools of thought, but here's the bottom line. The muscle doesn't know that. All the muscle know, knows is fatigue and recovery. Okay, that's all that muscle really knows. It really doesn't know how fast your, your tempo is, how slow it is. It doesn't know how many reps are, that you're doing. It doesn't know if you're doing 10 or 12 reps. It doesn't know that. Uh, the range of motion and repetitions that you set for yourself, uh, it's just it's a, it's a tool that you use. You concentrate on feeling the muscle um, fatigue. Training tempo. You can go slow. You can go medium and you can go fast again it's a small training tip but very important and that is feel what you train even if it's slow and don't worry about how many how much weight that you're using to train the muscle train the muscle don't weight lift don't weight lift train the muscle think about that distinction and uh we'll have another topic or two the next time that I come back on. In the meantime, for those of you that are out there, if there's a, uh, something that you would like me to talk about that perhaps is a bit confusing, because uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misconception in the industry, reach out, let me know what you'd like to talk about. Otherwise, the next time I come on, I'll be talking about some stuff that um, on my mind related to uh, training tips and techniques. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.